Here's a graph of y equals sine x. Notice I can add a term here, and I can do that with this slider, and we'll call that term d. So I'm going to make d1. See if you can guess ahead of time what the graph is going to do. OK, I'll move it to 1. There it is. It's moved up 1. I'll make d2. It's moved up 2. There's 3, 4, and 5. So this number here has the effect of moving the graph up. Of course, it's a vertical translation. I'll set d equal to 0 again. And if that's negative, of course, it will still be a vertical translation, but it'll translate downwards. So here we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. So these sinusoidal functions behave exactly the way polynomials behaved. This is the vertical translation. Sketch one period of the function y equals 2 sine 2x two plus 2. Step 1, determine the vertical displacement. And that is given by the 2 at the end, the plus 2. We know the graph is raised 2 up. And so the vertical displacement is plus 2. Determine the amplitude. That's given by the number at the beginning, and that's also a 2. So the amplitude is 2. Determine y max and y min. Now the graph will be raised up 2. That'll be the vertical displacement. And then from there, we'll go up 2 to the y max because of the amplitude is 2. So y max is 4. And then it will go down 2 from the vertical displacement to 0. Determine the period. That's given by the 2 in front of the x. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. And now we'll sketch a working axis. And that's the vertical displacement, y equals 2. That's where the graph will be centered about. If it helps, sketch two light horizontal lines at y equals 4, the maximum, and y equals 0. So let's put those lines in. There's my working axis, y equals 2. And this will be the maximum the sine wave goes up to. And this will be the minimum. So you don't have to draw those lines, but if it helps, draw them. Now determine a convenient scale. The period is pi. I have to be able to divide that into four equal parts. So I'm going to make eight squares pi. You could use four squares if you like. Now I'm going to put some points on. First of all, there's pi. And I'll divide that into two, pi over two, and then into two more, three pi over four, and pi over four. So there are my four points. Now I'll get some points on the graph. We know the sine wave starts, if there were no vertical displacement, it would start at 0, 0. But it's up 2, and so it's going to start at 0, 2, right there. And we know it peaks in the first quarter cycle, and that will be at pi over 4. Then it will go down to pi over 2 there. And then it peaks the other way, the negative direction, at 3 pi over 4, and then goes back to 0. And so now we can sketch the smooth graph through those points. There it is. The vertical displacement is 2. The amplitude is 3. Notice it's positive. The amplitude's always positive. So y max, that's 2. And it will go up 3 from 2. So y max is 5. And then y min. That's 2, and it will go down 3 from 2, and so that's negative 1. Now the period is 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is 4 pi. Now I've drawn in the central axis here at y equals 2. Here are my two other guiding lines, because it goes up to 5, and then down to negative 1. The period is 4 pi, so I'm just going to let each square be pi. Now it's a negative sign, and that means it starts right here. In one quarter cycle, we'll go down to its minimum, because it's negative. In the next quarter cycle, we'll go back to the working axis. 
next quarter cycle up to its maximum, next quarter cycle back to the working axis. So here it is. The vertical displacement is 1, and the amplitude is 4. So y max, it goes up from the vertical displacement, up 4, so 1 plus 4 is 5, and then y min, it starts at the vertical displacement and goes down 4, so 1 take away 4 is negative 3. Period is 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. Now I'll move my lines in. First of all, here comes the vertical displacement line, and then the two guidelines. The maximum is 5, and the minimum is negative 3, so I know my graph has to lie between those lines. Now I'll pick a convenient number of squares to represent pi over 2. How about we let pi over 2 be 4 squares right there? Okay, so this will be pi over 2. That means pi is 8 squares, but we don't even need pi. We'll just go pi over 2 is 4 squares. And then we divide that into 4 parts. There it is. And it's a negative cosine graph. Now cosine would normally start here at this maximum, but it's negative. So it will start down here at the negative 3. See how convenient that line is? Go to 0 in the first quarter cycle, and then peak the other way in the next quarter cycle, back to 0, back to its original line there. Okay, so now I've got to sketch that in. So that'll go up like that, down like that, down like that, and then all the way down to the neg most negative part. I've got the function here, y equals sine of x minus c. Here c is set to zero radians. I can vary c with this slider here. We're going to observe what happens to this red dot here. That's fixed to the graph as I increase c. See how the graph moves to the right? There's pi over 2, 1.57 radians. It's just about exactly pi over 2, and you can see it's moved to the right, pi over 2 here. And there's pi, pi radians. It's moved to the right, pi radians. Notice the graph, because of the negative sign, moves to the right. Going here, there's 3 pi over 2. And finally, 2 pi, 6.28 radians, is the right. So this is just like the polynomials with that negative here. It moves it to the right. Now we're going to graph y equals cos of x minus c. Now c at this time is going to be negative, and so we get the effect of y equals cos x plus some number, OK? Now remember what happened to a polynomial when we replaced x with x plus 3 or something, the graph moved 3 to the left. So let's see what happens here as I increase this. And sure enough, the graph is moving to the left. There's pi over 2, 1.57 radians. So x plus 1.57, or pi over 2, moves it pi over 2 to the left. And we'll go to pi now. There it is. x plus pi radians moves it pi radians to the left of the y-axis. There's 3 pi over 2, and finally 2 pi. So again, the effect is exactly the same as with the polynomials. But the period again is 2 pi. And the phase shift this time is pi over 2, and because of the minus sign, it's right. Now let's let pi be 4 squares and then 2 pi, the period, is 8 squares. So pi over 2 
pi is 4, pi over 2 must be 2 squared. So that's where we start the graph. So it's going to start here. It's a sine, so it starts on the principal axis there. And the period is 2 pi, so it's going to go over 8 squared. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the midpoint. 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll divide that into four equal parts. That's the whole period. And then we'll start here. It will peak here, back to zero here, peak in the negative direction there, and back to zero there. So all I have to do is draw it now. And then if you like, you can put in this part too. The amplitude is 2. The vertical displacement is 2. Now the y max, the maximum value of y, is going to be 4 because it starts at 2 on the vertical displacement line and goes up 2, so that's going to be 4. And then the y min will be 0 because it goes down 2 from 2. Now the period is 2 pi. And the phase shift is pi over 6. And I'll just put right there so I remember. And let's let pi be 6 squares. That means that 2 pi is 12 squares. And pi over 6, the phase shift is 1 square. Okay, let's put our working axes on. So this goes at 2. That is the vertical displacement. And we know the graph goes up 2 and down 2 from there, right along the x-axis. Now, where does the graph start? It's a cosine graph, so that means it starts at the top, the highest point. And it's pi over 6 to the right. So pi over 6 is 1 square. So cosine will start here. And then it will end 12 squares later. That's 2 pi, and the period's 2 pi. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So that's where it will end. And then we just have to divide this into four equal parts. So there's the middle, and there's the other two. OK, and so it will go down to here in the first quarter cycle. Then down to here in the next quarter cycle, back up to here, and ending here. And if you want, you can complete it. It'll be over here somewhere, so it'll just come down like that. The amplitude is 3. The vertical displacement is 4. And it goes up from the vertical displacement to the maximum which is going to be 3 up the amplitude. So y max is going to be 7. And then it goes from the vertical displacement down 3. So y minimum will be 1. 4 take away 3 is 1. The period is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. The phase shift is pi over 3 right. Now let's let pi be 6 squares. The period's pi, so we don't need 2 pi. And that means that pi over 3 is 2 squares, one third of that. Now where will the graph end? Well, it's going to start at pi over 3. And then the period is pi, so add that on. And that will give us our end point, which will be 4 pi over 3. We've got our vertical displacement of 4, so let's put that line on. And now let's put the other working lines. We're going to go up to 7 and then down to 1. So there are our working lines. Now we need to get the phase shift 
we let pi be 6 squares, then pi over 3 will be 2 squares. So there's pi over 3. Now we need to go 6 squares over from that to get the end of it, because the period is pi now, not 2. So that's where it will end. Now we need to divide that into four equal parts, so it's six, so there's going to be one and a half squares in each one. Now it's a cosine graph, so it will start at the maximum point right there. Then it will go down to zero there, that's one and a half squares over, notice. Then it will go down to the minimum at one, right there. Then it will go over one and a half more, and finally peak right there at four pi over three, seven. Now we'll connect that with a smooth curve, and if you want, you can go back to the y-axis right there. Write the equation of this function in the form y equals a sine b x minus c plus d. Step 1. Locate the working axis. From this line, we can see that the vertical displacement is 2. So d, the constant d in the equation, is equal to 2. If the numbers are more difficult, you should realize that the working axis is in the middle of the graph. So you could take the average of y max and y min. That will be in the middle. And that would be 4 plus 0 divided by 2 equals 2. By more difficult numbers, I mean perhaps decimals or very large numbers. Step 2, determine the amplitude. You can see that it's 2 from the graph, or use the formula that we developed before. The amplitude is the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by 2. And so we get 2 again, and that's the constant a. So the formula so far is y equals 2, the amplitude, sine bx minus c plus 2, the vertical displacement. And we'll continue this on the next slide. Step 3 is to determine the period. Pick a convenient point, and I picked the point on the y-axis there, and then find the next point where the graph starts to repeat. And you can see that's over at 2 pi over 3. And now we have to determine the constant b. Remember that 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over b. You can see by inspection that b is 3. You could also just solve that if it were more complicated. Now we've been using this formula all along to get the period from the equation p equals 2 pi over b. Well, we know the period, so we equate 2 pi over b to the period and then solve for b. Step 4 is to determine the phase shift. This is a sine graph, so you can see it's been shifted pi over 6 units to the right. And so finally our equation is y equals 2, the amplitude sine 3, that's the constant b, x minus pi over 6, the phase shift, plus 2, the vertical displacement. Now we need to determine the vertical displacement. You can see it's still going to be 2 for this graph. It's the same graph as before. And then the amplitude is also 2, so that's 2. And the period will be 2 pi over 3. You can check from here to here if you like. Try a new spot. That's pi minus pi over 3 is 2 pi over 3. So we've got the amplitude is 2, the vertical displacement is 2, and the period is 2 pi over 3. And don't forget to get b. We just go that the period is 2 pi over 3, the period is 2 pi over b. Right, so we go 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over b, and you can see that b would have to be 3 to make this true, so b is 3. And finally, the phase shift for a cosine graph, that would be this, and that is pi over 3 to the right. You could also go this way, okay, there's more than one way to write these graphs, but we'll pick the simplest way. So the phase shift is pi over 3 right. And so our equation then is y equals the amplitude, 2, cosine, b is 3, x minus pi over 3, 
plus the vertical displacement, 2. Now you can see the vertical displacement here is 2. There's the center line of the graph. Don't forget we can find the average of y max and y min. 4 plus 0 divided by 2 is 2. So the vertical displacement is 2, and we're calling that d in the equation, so d is equal to 2. And then the amplitude, you can see it goes up to, down to, so that's the amplitude. And that is a in the equation. Now, period is, let's see, it starts here. It starts over again right here, so that's pi over 2 from there to there. So pi over 2. Now let's get the constant b. Well, we know the formula for the period is 2 pi over b. And we know the period, it's pi over 2. Pi's cancel. You can see when we cross multiply, we're going to get b is equal to 4. And the last thing is the phase shift. If this is a sine graph, it would normally start here. So it's been shifted this much. That's pi over 2, so this must be pi over 4. So there's our phase shift. So the equation then is y is equal to a, the amplitude, times sine. b, the number that goes in front here, is 4. x minus the phase shift, pi over 4, plus the vertical displacement, d, which is 2.